So an odd one this week. Not exactly the video I had planned, but something happened. I was out and about doing my reptile routines as always, when I noticed a magpie that isn't normally in the garden. And he didn't fly away, but instead hopped up the bush and into the evergreen tree. Bit strange, but they're nimble birds, so I didn't think much of it. He came back a couple more times, and that's when he caught my attention. I noticed there was a loose feather hanging from his right wing, and he kept leaving through the same method. Why wasn't he flying out like a normal bird? So I kept an eye out and even tried to use my camera to get a closer look. But whenever he spotted me, even just my forehead from the upstairs window as I tried to be stealthy, every time he'd bolt before I could zoom in or get a decent look. After two days of him hopping in and out of the garden, I decided I wasn't happy until I got to have a proper look at him. There's clearly no hope of getting close enough to throw a towel over him. No chance I'd be able to lure him in towards me. He's just too skittish. So let's try the classic boxing some string with some bait underneath. All set up, I set my camera up outside and synced it to my phone so I could hide in my shed, out of sight, and watch the live footage. One hour later, it started getting dark, so I figured I'd try again tomorrow. Same thing the next day. I'd seen the magpie frequent the garden multiple times that morning. Same thing, in the shed, two hours pass. No sign of him whatsoever. Two other magpies visited, but neither of these two were the one we're after. They took a snack and left. Magpies are very intelligent birds, not to be underestimated. I went indoors to grab some lunch and lo and behold, not even a minute later, there he is, in the garden, almost taunting me. He'd seen what I was doing and decided so long as I'm in the shed, he's not coming out of that tree. I should be packing for my house move, but instead I'm playing a battle of wits with a bird and losing. Let's see if we can beat him at his own game. Same method, worms and peanuts as bait. But this time, the string will venture through the garden, through my kitchen, and all the way into the living room. Out of sight, out of mind, Sean's in the house, everything must be okay. And sure enough, within five minutes, he's arrived and checking out the food offering. He's understandably cautious. I only have one shot at this. If I miss, he'll catch on and surely won't fall for the bait a second time. So I decided to let him take the first few to show the box isn't that bad. Nothing happens when he goes inside. You can really see him investigating this new strange contraption in the middle of the garden. Why is it here? What is it doing? And why is there food under it? Is it safe? My heart was going a hundred miles a minute at this point. If I mess this up, he might not come back. And if he's unable to fly, then he's an easy meal for birds of prey, hungry cats, or even foxes. He might escape a few predators jumping up bushes and into trees. But what happens if, like a cat, they're able to climb up after him? Lowering it slightly every time to make the catch a bit easier. Less fall time equals less time to jump out of the way. But in hindsight, I should have placed the box or camera facing the other side. Can't see a thing. I think this is it. This is my one chance, but I can't see him, just a tiny bit of movement and got him. He doesn't know what to do. The poor thing's stressing out and starting to panic. 
The darkness and cover a towel brings help calm him down. But there's no way I'm doing this outside. I need to get rid of the bowl and move him indoors. So I gently slid a lid underneath. To try and catch him outside leaves far too big an opportunity for him to escape. At least in my garage, if he escapes, slips past me, he'll still be somewhat contained indoors. It's also quite a warm day this early on in the year. The box will act as a greenhouse, warming up to unbearable heat in no time. So we need to keep him out of the sun and in the shade. It's amazing how effective the towel is. Just watch through the gap as he stops frantically running around, stands still, and waits. Using the towel again helps me get a good grip around his entire body, keeping the wings closed so we don't damage them. Thankfully, this isn't my first time handling a bird, otherwise it could be much more nerve-wracking. using a gentle but firm grip, while holding his legs tucked against his body. It may look like I'm playing with him, but his attempts to bite me are actually perfect for letting me check out his beak and throat for any sign of infection. Some throat infections can cause inflammation and swelling to the point that the animal can't actually consume any food. He's clearly not too fond of me and I don't blame him for constantly biting me but a flannel over his face once again helps keep him calm. Giving him a thorough health check for any signs of wounds, broken bones, illness and parasites. His feathers aren't in the best shape, but we knew that already. Otherwise, I'm currently seeing no cause for concern for the rest of his body. Very active, has a lot of fight in him. Wings working as they should be. No sign of pain or inflammation. Skin looks great, no excess oral discharge. Seems like one incredibly healthy bird, minus the missing feathers. Time to get some pictures, which gives me the chance to send some contacts that know much more about birds than me. But I ended up calling in a second pair of hands. When I saw him in the garden, I originally thought he might have been caught by a cat. But after seeing both of the wings displaying exactly the same damage, it seems as though his wings have been clipped. But what's strange about this? This is quite messy and not normally the way clipped wings look. Now, on a good day, I still don't agree with clipping feathers. Flight is essential for most birds, and if appropriate space or training can't be provided, then maybe they aren't the right pet for you. Clipping a bird's wings is similar to declawing a cat in my mind. Granted the feathers grow back, but the quality of life and possible enrichment is massively affected. I just can't see a good, selfless reason for doing it. But after speaking to some bird lovers, more knowledgeable than me, we came to the conclusion he may have been stuck in a chimney or other tight space, and the frantic struggle to escape the tight environment snaps the feathers. Reason being is the feathers have clearly been broken. When clipped, the cut often leaves a straight line and clear cut. But these are frayed and messy. He's not skin and bone, doesn't appear to have been neglected, so there's a good chance it wasn't intentional. And he either got himself out of the situation, or someone came along and freed him from wherever he was, maybe without realising the predicament he's now left in. Although it's not ideal, luckily he came to a reptile keeper's garden. So I set up a spare arboreal vivarium to keep him safe and secure, while I go about working out something more ideal, especially for a bird of his size. The good news is, these feathers will grow back. The bad news is it can take up to a year. They often molt twice per year, but sometimes less, and I'm not the slightest bit prepared. I didn't expect to house a bird in such short notice. But as some of you may know, I've raised young pigeons before. I also rescued a canary at one point. 
so I'm not completely lost for experience. The main issue is the space required. Young birds don't fly straight away, so it's much easier to provide them with the space they need. I'm more than happy to provide him a home and maybe build a makeshift aviary for the time being. But I know a rescue would be much better equipped for the job. To release him again would likely result in his death. Sadly, no one in my area had space. It's just that time of year that a lot of places fill up as animals are abandoned and young animals need help. But luckily I found a rescue just over an hour's drive away with space to take him on. They're incredibly friendly, well equipped and seem to know their stuff. It turns out his feathers had already started growing back, so he managed to make do without flight in the wild and evade predation for at least a few weeks. A very fast, smart bird, clearly has his wits about him. So they'll keep him in an aviary till he's ready to go back out into the wild. As a thank you, I'll be sending them a donation at the end of the month when I get paid. The tough part of rehabbing a wild animal is to keep them wild. Magpies are smart birds and it's incredibly tempting to try tame them. However, if they become tame, there's a chance they may never be able to be released back into the wild. Also, fun fact for anyone wondering. It's illegal to take magpies from the wild, or other young birds or eggs with the intention of keeping. Magpies can be sold as pets, but the lineage has to stem back to legal capture, not an illegal removal from the natural environment. I believe the seller also needs to be licensed to sell these birds. However, fortunately, it is legal to keep an injured bird in the case of a rescue, but always attempt to search for experienced rehabbers. It's not an easy or cheap thing to do, and at the end of the day, it's a whole life on the line. If it's not done right, the animal is the one that suffers the consequences. So that's my strange and unexpected story. But luckily we got to help an animal in need, and hopefully we'll help more in the future. Let me know if you've had any similar experiences.